Fessy, uh, maybe could you describe what's the uh, maybe the intensity, physicality of practice, uh, kind of in the, the dog days of camp right now? What's been maybe the the, the vibe of practices this week? That's been one of the more promising things for me, just in the big picture of of the team, is the intensity, the the passion, the energy that's uh, that we're seeing right now, right in the thick of camp. And I think that right there is just a product of of the culture, you know, of the leadership we have on this team. And, and um, I've been really, uh, really pleased with the, the energy and the excitement that these guys are displaying, you know, in the, the toughest part of fall camp. You mentioned leadership. Who, who are some of those individuals on the offensive side that you've noticed taking on more of a leadership role on, uh, this year? Um, first guys that come to mind, just obviously our, our, our three quarters, three quarterbacks, battling out, done a great job um, on the O-line. Harris Lachance is, is a guy that always sticks out to me, how vocal and how, how much energy that guy has every single day, whether things are good or bad. James Empey is always a solid um, leadership figure, does his job. Receiving room, um, you know, Neil Gunner do a great job. Nakua Brothers, so much personality and energy. They do a great job. Um, Keanu Hill does an unbelievable job. Our running backs, Lopini um, and Tyler, you know, our guys who – who have always, you know, just kind of shown leadership in the way they play, but I've seen them more vocal this year than I, I you know, they haven't shown in the past. And then, um, you know, Isaac Rex, Down Holker. I mean, some of those key positions, those guys, one, one of the things that makes them great is their leadership uh, qualities as well. And they're all a part of that, that energy we see every day. Okay, go ahead, Jay. That's I'm just curious, are you ready to share kind of your receiver's depth chart with us yet, or are you still a little bit away from, from nailing that down? Yeah, yeah, I'm not ready yet. I'm, I'm, I mean, I think it's it's taking shape, but, but um, you know, there's still – there's still things I got to figure out uh, and work through. Um, I, I, I can say that Neil and Gunner, you know, it's not a surprise, are, are two guys that, you know, we're, we're going to be investing heavily in. They're proven guys. Um, you know, but after that, there's there's a plethora of receivers who, um, with a little bit more time and reps, you know, I can start to um, discuss that more. So the video from, we saw from the scrimmage uh, looked like you've got some newcomers that are that are showing well. Can you kind of give us an idea of what maybe new faces we might see this year that are kind of moving up a little bit? Yeah. Um, newcomers, as in like their first time here, or just guys who haven't played a lot, like in the past. Yeah, or just. just Who's, besides the, the guys we know about, maybe, yeah. who are some guys that have kind of surprised you or impressed you that maybe yeah. you don't know that much about? Keanu you? Hills had a had a great fall camp. He's one that just with time and more experience gets better and better, um, in, improves in, in his receiver play and understanding our offense. Chris Jackson is another one who's taken such a big step in terms of just the mental part of, and knowledge of the playbook. He's he's super comfortable, and, and I completely trust him, um, you know, understanding the playbook. Um, Braden Cosper, unbelievable camp. Um, and then, you know, the Nakua brothers, I know they're they're on a limited basis right now, but when they go, they've, they've shown and proven that they got the playbook down and, and can make plays when the ball comes their way. Um, you know, Hobbs Nyberg is another one who's, when, when he gets his, his uh, shots, you know, he, he, he takes advantage of them. Um, I know when you start naming guys, you run the risk of forgetting guys, but I can go down the list. Every guy's done something well, but those are just some of the guys that have um, have really stepped up this camp. Hey, man, go ahead. Bessie, uh, Kalani's mentioned in the past that, you know, he'll more likely than not defer to, to Erod and you when it comes to the quarterback decision. Uh, what input will you give uh, to A-Rod in the decision? What's maybe been your observations of these quarterbacks? Just my, my, my perspective from a receiver standpoint, um, I think there's two components to that. One is I know what my guys, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty vocal and, you know, and, and positive about the different quarterbacks and what they bring and, and um, you know, little things, how, how, how the ball comes out their hand and, and um, you know, some of that stuff from the receiver side. And then there's just my side of, of whatever I know from the little bit of quarterbacks I coached and then um, just another voice in the coaching room. A-Rod's always been great at being, you know, including everyone and, and getting our opinion. So that's kind of how, where I see my role. Nothing, nothing crazy, just giving my opinion from, from a receiver perspective and um, from my own individual one. One of the younger names in the receiver room that I wanted to, to touch base with you on is, is Cody Epps. I know he's banged up a little bit in spring and, 
and dealt with some uh, injuries here and there in, in fall. But how's he coming along? Is is he healthy? Where, where's Cody at? He's progressing. He's one that we're we're still. Um, just being very, very careful with, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a foot deal and that's not something you want to you want to push. So um, in terms of he's ready mentally, there's no doubt in my mind he's so competitive, but he's someone who I'm just, you know, slow playing and I'm not forcing it. Um, so, yeah, that's why we haven't seen a ton of him this fall. Expensive. Yep. Jerem, go ahead. What's up, Fessy? How you doing, man? Good. What's up, man? Good. Um, so you mentioned the uh, Nikua brothers are on a limited basis right now. Are they pacing to be available and play against Arizona? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep. That's that's the plan. So. And what have you seen from them that has impressed you to where you feel like they could make an impact this season? The just their ability to to make plays. I mean, they, when the they have a knack for going and getting the ball, um, understanding. Um, the concepts that we have, knowing you know where the ball is going to be, and and they bring um, they just bring a lot of personality to our room. I, I know that's something that you don't see in statistics and numbers, but that's huge when you have guys that have a natural um, ability to lead and to bring energy um, and passion to the field. Like you value that stuff as a coach, and so the fact that they can couple that with their ability to make plays and pick up this playbook are, are things that I think are keeping them on track to for us to see a lot of them this year. And the, did they integrate right away really well, or did it take a second? Right away. Right away. And the reason why, one, I think they're going to fit in no matter where they go. That's just their personality. Um, but the other thing is just the credit to our room, man. They, those guys, no egos, uh, welcomed them in with open arms right away. And then that trickled out to the rest of the team. I just think the culture of this team and the way everyone's taking them in is, is just more proof of, of the family unit and bond and the culture that we have here. Okay, last question, Greg, go ahead. Hey, Fessy, um, I know you're busy with your own thing, obviously, but have you gotten any sense uh, of the buzz Dax is creating uh, with Washington? And and I'm sure you're not surprised that he's opening eyes. What helps him do that at a high level, do you think? Uh, his ability to just stay calm in who he is no matter what. Um, when And Dax is, was like that last year when things were going really good or when, when you know, things were – were a little tense. He was the same person. So I'm not surprised. I've been able to fortunately to be to stay in touch through text. Just talked to him the other day and just got kind of got his opinion on things and how things are going. I'm so proud of him. Um, I know he's just going to con continue to keep doing well. And, and I think the future is really bright for him. And what does it mean to have, I mean, presuming these sticks, have, have, have BYU receivers, um, you know, contributing at the next level for this program? Yeah, it, it means a lot. You know, it just it, it, it just sends the message to most importantly, our guys right now in the room that, that they can accomplish their goals. You know, we preach that as a staff that you come here to BYU, you can accomplish all your goals that you can anywhere else. And, you know, when, you, when, when guys go to the NFL and specifically in the receiver room, that keeps that message flowing strong. And then it sends a message to all the recruits and the potential uh, players here, um, you know, that are going to play for BYU that, that you, can, you can go accomplish your dreams, whether you come in as a highly touted recruit, four-star, five-star guy, or whether you walk on and, and don't have many scholarships that you'll come here, you'll thrive, you'll get your opportunities, and if you make the most of it, you'll be able to, to accomplish your goals. Thanks, Fessy. Yep. All right, thanks, Fessy. Thank you, guys.